What happens when two seasoned business leaders get together? They talk shop, of course. Sit back and listen in as Scott DeLong and Vince Moiso share from their experience around current issues facing executives, entrepreneurs, and their leadership teams. The CEO Podcast starts now. Hey everybody, Vince Moiso here from the CEO Podcast. I'm here as always with Scott DeLong. Hi folks. Uh, and uh, you know, we have this talk, our, our previous episode, Scott, you know, we talked about the the, the book, the, the Fearless Organization. Yep. And you know, if you listen to that podcast episode, you know that Scott has has been working with my business and a few of us there, and we're, we're reading this book chapter by chapter and really sharing our thoughts on this. Now, there's a topic, a very, very specific topic from that book, and mm-hmm. it it surrounds this fear of failure. And I think wow. I think that the, the point of that conversation is is really around how much that absolutely drives us as human beings and our ability or inability to speak freely um, within an organization because of how strong that fear of failure is. So before we get into yeah. the conversation, just, uh, you know, let's jump in on a few things first. So first of all, we want to thank everybody who has supported the show and, and, and watched us on YouTube, listened to us on Spotify, Apple, Google, any of the places they listen. But, but if you could do us a favor and, and uh, send us an email, scottandvince at gmail.com. What you like, what you don't like, what future topics you'd like to hear guys go deeper on. Uh, all of that's great. Like and share, Comment. right? Make the comments on uh, the ratings and rankings and all those kind of things. Those really do matter. Yeah. It, it, it makes exposure to, to more folks. So yeah. enough, enough of that. Let, let's get back into this topic. So yep. um, yeah, it's in the middle of the book, chapters five or six, something like that. The, the book, The Fearless Organization by Amy Edmondson, who is a Harvard professor and a really well-written book. And, and I, I recommend it highly to anyone who hasn't read it yet. And if you have read it, read it again, right? I, I read it several times. It's like, I use it as a course book in, in some of the, the work we do. Yeah. And, and and what this is, is, is the feel of failure. And there's actually a scientific name for this. It's atrophobia. Atrophobia means the fear of failure. Yeah. And that's, that's a condition that people have, like uh, uh, claustrophobia. I'm claustrophobic. I don't like being, I don't want to be buried. I just I don't want to be in a coffin, right? But people have this thing that's called actophobia. And it can come from a and it and it presents itself in a lot of different ways, right? Uh, people that have this fear of failure will procrastinate. They tend to procrastinate, not, mm-hmm. not getting to the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't necessarily follow through on tasks that relates to the, the goals. And then it's also a failure to stretch goals or, or to set goals and especially stretch goals. All right. Well, in fact, it's it's it it, it it the fear of failure causes fear of a bunch of other things, right? A- absolutely. And I, I, I immediately think of of you know I, I obviously went through the whole curriculum of of landmark. I've talked about it before, yep. and one of the things they talk about in um, you know in the, the 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 first part of that curriculum is this innate fear of looking bad, mm-hmm. right? So oftentimes we don't do things because we don't want to look bad to others. And that and that goes hand in hand with what we're talking about here, which is that fear of failure. So we may not bring up an idea because we have this absolute fear uh, that someone might not like it, yep. that it might completely fail, or that we look bad doing it. And so we don't bring it up or we have this objection in a meeting, you know, we're in a manager's meeting and somebody says something and I'm listening to it and I'm saying, that doesn't sound right. right. But you know what? I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I have this fear of looking, looking bad, bad or others, that right. my idea is going to fail right. or whatever thing I'm going to push back on just isn't going to land the way that I think it's going to land. So instead, I just sit back and go, eh, I'm just not going to say So we, we do that as a protection me- mechanism. However, what it's doing is holding you back. It's holding back your ideas, your thoughts, or whatever. I'm, I'm going to suggest this. We have a group of 10 people in there, and someone's really presented an idea. 
you're not the only one that thinks there might be something wrong with that thing, right? <laughs> uh, but you might be the only one with enough courage to say something. To actually or say something question about it. it. Just yeah. say, let's explore this a little bit, right? So I'm going to give credit to, to the entrepreneurial world right now, because I think that in the last 10, 15 years, the entrepreneurial world has really made a big push on failing fast, mm -hmm. learning how to fail so that we can learn from those failures. We gave a lot of credit to that. However, have we allowed that to the people below us? Good question. Maybe not, right? And just check yourself, right? If, if we want to fail to learn, and, and none of us want to fail, on, but we do. All, we all want to learn. So failure is where we're going to learn. And, and I, I don't really like the word failure. I changed that to, yeah, this idea just didn't work this time, right? Or this idea didn't work in this way. That doesn't mean it's a failure. It's only a failure if I didn't learn something from it. Well, the, the, so here's, here's take the that word out. Is if you've never if you've never touched a hot stove before in your life, you yeah. have no idea that it's going to burn you, right? And so, so you 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 don't know. And in fact, I was having this exact conversation with somebody the other day, and I was bold enough to say, "Show me a leader that has never failed, and I will show you an unsuccessful organization." Because mm -hmm. I believe that it takes failure to actually be successful. So and, I, and you can hear that in countless examples and countless case, case studies. However, you don't learn exactly like what you're saying yeah. here. You don't learn if you don't fail. And I just want to say this before, before you respond to that. This goes down to the most fundamental psychological concept, which is we are built for survival. That's what we are built for. Yeah. And, and it, that's fundamentally what we're talking about. And our fear of failure is our body takes over. This mechanism within us takes over and says, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm not going to take a risk. I'm not going to do this because I'd rather survive than put myself in a place where I would. That, that just brought me to, a, to a, an analogy, right? Uh, I am a pretty good... I'm a very good intermediate skier. Mm. I am never going to be an expert because I pride myself on not falling. <laughs> I, I, I pride myself on not falling. I can ski down almost, not almost any slope on all of our local mountains, sure. Mammoth, Tahoe, sure. Sure. Uh, Park City, places like that. I can, I can get down almost all of them, right? I am never going to go helicopter skiing because I'm never going to be an expert skier. Because while I'm going down these hills in Park City, comfortably carving things out, I am priding myself on not falling. Therefore, I have no chance of being an expert. I well, get, and in fact, you'll just be, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Uh, you know, I'm okay so with that. Part. You're just going to be an average skier, yep. and that's okay. Yep. There's nothing There's nothing wrong with that. And if that's what you enjoy and you, you prefer to be comfortable, that's just a space that's okay to live in. And, and hence the word, okay, yeah, right? It, You'll, you're just, just okay. going to be okay. Just going to be okay. And, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm simply, I simply was making a point from a business perspective that if you take the countless That's, examples of, of those businesses that have gone next level, there's failure attached they, to they it. They take the risk yeah. of falling. Yeah. Uh, and, and honestly, if you want to have yourself a really cool lifestyle business, do it the way I ski. Make sure you don't fall. Got a nice lifestyle. You're happy every day. Yeah, fine. All that kind of stuff. Nothing wrong with if it. If you want to make it to the next level, if you want to, if you want to really bust out, right? You're going to have to take a risk, and that risk comes with the potential for failure, or not getting as much as you wanted in that time, right? So, listen. There's all kinds of causes for this fear of failure. A lot of them come from childhood. Most of our problems do, right? Uh, the way we are raised and our parents' expectations and those things. Sometimes it comes from uh, your bosses. You've had a boss that that rewards success and and punishes failure. Are you going to take a lot of failure in your life? Probably not. If your current boss is doing that, your company's not going to get to that next level, yeah. I'm going to suggest. But understand that the, the causes for this. When there's causes, there's also cures. Yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about those. Well, I'm reminded. I just want to say this really quick: is that I I go back to uh, you know I'm such a movie buff, 
tell you, life life for me is a movie quote, a, a music lyric, or sarcasm in some way, right? There you go. Well, so uh, back to the future, right? Marty Marty asks his dad. Well, his dad says something to the effect of, uh, you know, Crispin Glover, right? Who, mm-hmm. who plays the dad? He says he says, you know, I've always wanted to write a book, and and Marty says, well, why have you never done? I just don't think I could take that kind of rejection, <laughs> right? And and trust me, writing a book gives you plenty of rejection. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, though. That's yeah. the fear of failure yeah. overcoming you to make a decision to not do something because the fear of failure is greater. Than, than what could potentially become uh, or come from. And like you say, if you're thing. comfortable and comfort's what you're looking for, fine, do that. Yeah. Just do that. Yeah. But if you're like most of the entrepreneurs I know, most of the CEOs that I know, they want next level. They want yeah, yeah. you to get to the next level. They want the organization to get to the next level. So we need to find a way to get past that fear of failure. Mm-hmm. And I get it. Mom and dad, you know, rewarded the success. My boss rewarded the success. They, they, they punished my failure. So therefore, you have this, this fear to do that. So how do we overcome those things? Mm-hmm. That, that's the, the overcome those childhood memories or the last boss memories and things. There's a lot of ways of getting that done. First one is you need the support of the people. This is where the book Psychological Safety comes comes into play, support right? Support of others. The, is the, the organization needs yeah. to support your your potential. Or now, your family, or your friends, yeah, or your who, peers. Whoever it's gonna it be. Is, yeah. And and one of the things that, that Edmondson, Dr. Edmondson talks about is failing fast, right? Let's find out if this thing works. Let's test it and see if it fails and fail fast and then get yeah. back to reality. Yeah. One of our previous guests, Scott Duffy, is a big proponent of that as well. You know, ship before you're ready is his thing. I'm not quite that far along, ship before you're ready. Yeah. But failing fast is the concept so that we don't get mirrored into this pattern of consistency. Yeah. Nothing wrong with consistency, but if all we're doing is a pattern of consistency, eventually the bell curve starts going back down and you will start losing, losing on your business, right? So one of the cures, reframing the definition of failure. I already given you mine. It's only a failure if I didn't learn anything from that thing that didn't work the way I thought it was going to. Yeah. It's, then therefore it's not a failure. I'm, I'm okay with that. Well, I love learning I, experience. I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll take this as the example. So, like, what immediately comes to mind is is skating, you know, skateboarding and and surfing. Yeah. Right. And and Tony, I'm a big fan of Tony Hawk. You know, and I and, and I grew up in, in in that era and watching Tony Hawk and just being in awe. Well, first came the 360, then came the 720. And then no one thought in a million years that somebody could do a 900 and, 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 and he did it right. And he fell and fell and fell yep. and fell. Like yep. if you watch there, you can go back and watch him. There's a tournament that happens that literally shuts down because he keeps trying the 900, like as if he's going to land and he's failing and failing and failing. And finally he freaking nails it. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, man, he could have just stopped, but he did it. It's just, it, it surfing's the same way. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, I, I remember on my first trip to Fiji and the waves were way more than way bigger than I'd ever surfed in my life. And I went out and, and on the first wave, I got my ass handed to me. I mean, I am underneath the water, not knowing if I'm going to make it up Suck and, and just, yep. just, man, just getting completely tossed, rolled up. And I could have said, I'm done. Yep. I'm 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 going in and gonna kiss the sand right now. I've uh, surfed Tahiti. I'm good. And and it went it went back, you know, and I went right back out and I caught the wave of my life. And that would have never happened yeah. if I if I if I had just given up because of that fear of failure. Um, and and those are those are simpler examples yep. maybe that are that are sports related. But I'm telling you, you can relate it again and again. And the other thing I wanted, because what comes to mind when I talk, when, when I hear fear of failure, when I read the concept in the book, uh, I thought of sales and rejection mm. and hearing no. Mm. And I think I think from a sales perspective, this is such an important conversation. Or because, dating even. Yeah. But the same thing. You just right? hear, you yeah. hear, you, you're going to hear no. You right. just are going to hear no. Right. And you need to be able to handle those type of objections. You need to be able to come back. And what I'd say is, because you talk about cures, 
And I think of it from a sales perspective, I think preparation is everything. Sure. The more you know going into something, the more you reduce failure as, as, as an actual outcome. So you're, you're constantly reducing your risk when you prepare, when you know, when you understand what the outcomes might be, when you study it, when you do a lot of things up front to say, hey, I'm going to put myself in the best position to win or to get the outcome that I want, you're reducing failure as an outcome for yourself. And that is an absolute cure. So that leads right into to one of the other cures that I that I consider is that one of the things that we can do is, is take a look at the best case and worst case scenarios, mm-hmm. right? So worst case in the sales thing, worst case scenario, worst case scenario, that buyer can kick me out of his room, kick me out of his office. Probably more likely he's gonna say no instead, right? Worst case scenario, I didn't get the sale. What's the best case? Best case scenario is a million dollar order or whatever your numbers are yeah. in, in whatever you're selling. Best case, and, worst case. And so take a look at the best case and worst case. Uh, if you look at um, uh, get, uh, the, the famous book, Getting to Yes, it talks about the, uh, uh, the Batman, Great book. right? Yeah. And, and it talks about understanding what the possibilities are from here, the, the highest and the lowest, and, and say, great, we want to eliminate as much of the, the worst case scenarios as we can, but I'm willing to accept a few of those yeah. because the possibility of that million dollar sale, that negotiation, that new product, yeah. whatever whatever it is that we're we're failing to say, just take a look at best case potential and the worst that can happen. Worst that can happen is, huh, it didn't work. Now, granted, worst case that can happen when you're developing a new product and waste a million dollars developing a product because you're so locked into it. This is why when, when Edmondson talks about failing fast. Yeah, yeah. L- let's test the idea before we sink a million bucks into it. Well, again, that's what I talk right? about preparation too. Yeah. I think you bring up a really good example because I think depending on the industry that you're in or depending on the business that you're running, there can be a very high financial cost to saying, hey, I have no fear of failure, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to, you know, go head first into Absolutely. whatever it is I'm doing. There can be a high cost to failure, right? And so I think I think you do, again, this goes back to preparation when I was sure. talking about that is understand what you're getting into and understand the cost. So you can do a cost analysis before you ever spend a penny, you know? Uh, so do that cost analysis, understand what you're getting into, and does the what does the benefit outweigh the the cost? Yeah. Right? And and so you've got to be able to look at that and say, great, I'm I'm making a calculated risk decision. And you can even test it further than that if you like. You can create focus groups, if you will, whether it's all your own salespeople, you bring in a couple of customers. Cost, very low cost. Low to cost that. to find yeah. out, does this idea have legs? Does it right? have merit? Does it, does it have some place to go? Yeah. And just because a couple of customers in a focus group say, hey, that's a really good idea, doesn't mean you're fully vetted no. yet. Right? What would you pay for that? <laughs> right. Would you be willing to pay this for that? So we, you... can, we can test our ideas yeah. before we have to commit test. to them. Novel idea. And I would much rather fail in a focus group then fail after I sunk a million bucks into a new piece of machinery. Hundred percent, wouldn't you? Hundred percent. Right. So there's all kinds. There's all kinds of ways to walk to walk through this. And well, countless and scenarios too that we could talk about, right, Scott? I mean, you know, just so so many things to get into as we talk about fear fear of failure. You know, I I think going back to the sales example, I love your worst case best case scenario uh, situation to think about because the worst case really is almost always they just say no. No. That's it. I mean, no. it's so funny how hard it is to to do the ask, right? You know, I talk about that a lot. It's it's asking for the referral or, you know, it's asking for whatever it might be, right? You know, just asking for somebody's business and the worst case scenario is almost always no. Now, certain situations, okay, maybe you lose a relationship over it. All right, let's rethink whether that's the right ask or if you're asking the right person. But, you know, most of the time it's it's no. So you have to realize uh, 
where is that fear of failure actually coming from? So I just faced this the other day. I have a, I had a potential client prior to the pandemic, right? Uh, my work is a lot in person and, mm -hmm. you know, in the pandemic really changed things a lot. Had to learn how to do things on Zoom and they're not as good. It's just not as good. So there was a, a potential client, Fortune 500 company. Now, I normally work with small organizations. This was the Fortune 500 company that said, wow, I could use what you're doing. Great. Can't wait till the pandemic's over so we can get you in here. Well, pandemic's over. So I go back and, and check check with this gentleman and kind of hesitate because they don't want to buy. I sent him a copy of my book, just out of the blue, just sent him a copy of my book about a month ago. Is the pandemic over? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I sent him a copy of a book, kind of spirit. I didn't get a response back. No, thank you for the book. Hey, we should talk. So dang, then I'm starting to feel rejected already, yeah, right? Of course. But no, no, I, this is a big, big opportunity for me. So I need to go out and ask. The gentleman was gracious in his response. It was a negative response. He said, you know what? We're pretty good on our leadership right now. And I don't see that changing very well. Meaning quit calling me. Yeah. Right? Ego takes a little bit of a hit because I do think I can help him. Um, but the worst case scenario was... That man let me down easy. He could have been rude. That would totally. have been the worst case scenario. Totally. He wasn't. He let me down easy. Most of our customers are going to do that. They're going to let you down easy. Why not ask? And you know how, how long has the pandemic been slowing down? I could have asked him three, four months ago. I didn't. I didn't do it till last week. Scott, I, didn't I got, do it till last I got, week no because joke. of that fear of failure. Listen, no joke. I got to I actually got this. I got to please take me off your email list. Literally, you asked me to follow up with you. Right. You're not on an email list. Right. This isn't a solicitation email. You asked me to follow up and you said, take me off your email. I, like literally I'm all, did you even read my, my email? You know, so I, I went through this whole, this whole thing at the end of the day. So what? He said, take me off. Okay. Yeah. Done. So here's, <laughs> the cares? here's the benefit Who of cares? me being Move rejected by this Fortune 500 company. I don't have to waste any more time on them. <laughs> okay. Next cool. play. Let's next, go on. Next yeah. play. Next play. Yeah. You know, life, life, life is really funny that way. Um, and, and I admittedly am a, in a, am a culprit of that. I think we both are where, you know, we kind of have to talk ourselves off the ledge a little bit with, with things like that. And I had it's to not, talk myself into reaching out to him. I yeah. had to talk myself into well, And you know what? Let's acknowledge that for a second. Yeah. And I want to say, because I don't, I don't want to diminish how hard it is to muster up the energy and the courage, courage to reach out to somebody because there is this innate fear that wells up inside that says, I just don't think I can take that kind of rejection. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's, the, so, so there's a cure for that as well. And, yeah. and I, and I it's actually, Marty, Marty McFly and I, it's the voice I actually of Marty thought about McFly this. always coming in. I actually thought about this <laughs> and it, that is saying that, that regardless of whether he needed this service from felt like he needed this service from me right now yeah. and rejected me, I still find value in what I do Yeah, and I'm okay with it. Yeah. I'm not for everybody. Got it. I'm okay with that. Yeah. There are other Fortune 500 companies out there, and there's a heck of a lot more smaller organizations. So, I and it and it took a while for me to muster up the courage to go out and ask him again. I get it. Especially when I gave him a gift and didn't respond, didn't say thanks for the book, none of that. That's the worst. Right. Yeah. I really had to muster up the courage because the the potential best case was so much more important than the potential worst case. I got the worst case. Cool. Yeah. Guess what? Here I am. I'm yeah. still up. Find another customer. All right, we're at that time, Scott. Yeah. So, so, you know, what's what's one or two takeaways right now? You know, start start doing this right now. How how are people going to overcome? So we we identified this fear of yeah. failure, yeah. right? We certainly talked about what some of the causes could be and we talked about some cures but I mean what what should people be doing tomorrow to so for, for the leaders I'm talking to the leaders right now not for the folk not for the sales guy that has to go make that call yeah the atrophobia thing is real people mm -hmm. have it it's real 
It creates procrastination. They follow through on tasks related to goals, failure to set goals. My job as a leader of these people, that some of them may have this atrophobia, is to provide the condition to recognize that it's real, that it came from somewhere, and provide the conditions that it is okay if we don't get this thing. And the best case scenario is greater than the worst case scenario potentially could be. Yeah. Do the math and say, best case is way up here, worst case is only this, it's worth trying. Yeah. What can happen? So for me, that's my thing. Yeah. So for me, Scott, um, and I don't care if you're the leader, if you're the salesperson, you know, in any position that you're in, just a human being that's listening to this podcast. Okay. With me, we all have fear of failure. It's a human trait that's just innate. Yep. And it goes back to that, that basic fundamental of, uh, that we were built for survival and that's what it is. Now, reality is, is I think for me, and I'm going to repeat what I said in the podcast is the number one thing that can overcome that fear of failure is preparation. So I think understanding what you're walking into a little bit better is going to reduce that risk of failure by a lot. And I think the more you can, whether we're talking about doing a cost analysis, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about understanding who you're talking to, mm -hmm. uh, whether we're talking about you know, what that business looks like, the best case, worst case, and doing that level of planning where you can see, great, you know what the outcome outweighs the risk. It's just all that type of preparation and planning reduces that risk of failure. And I think that's, that's a starting point for anyone. Wonderful. All right, I'm gonna make a message out to the audience here. Uh, for those of you who have gone this far and listened to the, this podcast. Thank you. I want you to, first of all, thank you. I want you to recognize why we're doing what it is that we're doing. One, it, it is good for us to have this kind yeah. of conversation yeah. with each other. We, we learn something every single time. But we also believe, both of us believe, that this is a conversation that people need to hear. Mm -hmm. Whether you're at the, the CEO level, you're the on, new entrepreneur, solopreneur, or you're looking to become, you're, you have aspirations to get into that, that C-level position, these are conversations that are good to have. Whether you listen to ours, whether you have your own with someone else that you trust, do this kind of stuff, right? The, the connection between human beings. Anyway, that's my message for today. Scott and I started this conversation. Uh, we started this podcast with the idea in mind. We were having exactly what we're doing here. We're Just, having this beer in the backyard. and we Not were this having beer. These, we didn't have a Pliny that oh, day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Pliny's good. Uh, Went down very easy. But, you know, we, we, we started this podcast because we had these type of conversations. And they were so profound that we said, we need to share this. Yeah. We need to share this. This is an experience share. And I agree with you, Scott. I think the thing that I love the most when we sit down and we do a podcast episode, I learn as much having the conversation as I hope that you guys take away as listeners. So I think that's the fun part. That's the passion behind the podcast. And when we talk about a subject like what we just discussed was around fear of failure, and it's just a common human trait. We all feel it. We're all normal human beings at the end of the day, and we all have a fear of failure. And I don't care if you're Michael Jordan, if you're Kobe Bryant, if you're Dwayne Wade. I don't, I don't care who you are, if you're Scott DeLong or Vince Moiso. We all have a fear of failure in anything that we're doing on a daily basis. So you heard Scott, you heard from Scott, you heard from me that we both have these situations where we have to have these internal conversations yeah. to talk ourselves off the ledge to move forward with something because that fear of failure is so strong inside of us. It's interesting that you picked those three guys. Those are three of the hardest working people getting prepared for a game. The game is just fun for them. Where they worked was in practice, Yeah, right? All three of them. So yeah. your point of preparation. Well, my, 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 you know, my, my, one of my favorite quotes is from Thomas Jefferson. And he says, I'm a great believer in luck. I find that the harder I work, the more of it I have. Yeah. And, and it's such a, it's such a reality. And so you take those three guys and they're probably arguably three of the hardest working guys in, in sports. And there's no coincidence that the work and preparation that they put 
into the game reduces the fear of failure. Is that going to translate into your business? Absolutely. absolutely. Absolutely can. Absolutely. Well, and in fact, you've got, you know, you're going to be speaking pretty soon, Scott, yeah. and and uh, should call this out. You know, we talked about it earlier. Uh, EO, a local EO chapter is going to be uh, having a uh, seminar that is with Tim Grover. And Tim Grover wrote two of my favorite books, Winning and Relentless. And in fact, he, he trained Dwayne Wade and Kobe Bryant. And he's the and, secondary speaker and I'm the... Pr- or- I know it's the other way. Around. Well, I Never think mind. it's the other way. Around. I think Tim right. Tim Grover. I'm sorry, but he, he's got. I think he's I got think it. He's got the spotlight. Right. But nonetheless, you get to participate in that, and yeah. I think that you have a lot to say that relates to what what Tim Grover is is well, talking thank you. about. Appreciate there. that. So that's that's EO Relentless. It's out in Palm Springs uh, in early May. If anyone's interested in going to see that, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, Anyway, thank you all for listening. We really appreciate all the effort that people have put in to helping out our podcast and, uh, and helping us share the message. Till next time. Cheers, folks. Cheers. Thank you for joining us for the CEO Podcast. Please visit us at theceopodcast.net where you can learn more about our co-hosts and listen to past episodes. If you would like to have a discussion and dive deeper into any topic, there is also an option to contact Scott or Vince to schedule some time with them. Thanks for listening.